Welcome college basketball fans to the Full Court Press Podcast with LT and Sammy D. This is the podcast that brings you legendary stories from college basketball's golden era and dives in deep with the current analysis of today's game. Get ready for the most energetic and entertaining college basketball podcast around. Let's get it. Sam, let's be honest. One of our favorite conferences due to your, um, uh, I guess, I don't know what to say, but uh, we got, I got the- you on, I got you onto the Mountain West last year. You I'll did, you way. did. You, you, did. Came, you, you did. came out here for some games and uh, yep. you fell in love. So. Yeah, and I almost had a heart attack uh, trying to run the floor at Colorado State, but we got uh, Mountain West Conference preview show with Coach Nico Medved, and I guess his former boss, is that a yes, fa- fair, fair enough thing? <laughs> yes, sir. We got Mr. Happy, Mr. Sunshine, the greatest college basketball coach on the golf course. We got San Jose State. Tim Miles joining us on the Full Court Press. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. the only question we need to ask is can the mountain west get six teams in the tournament again next year i'll take that nico Go uh, uh we should every year i mean for crying out loud the fact that it hasn't happened every year is a little bit of a travesty in my book let me just tell you this guys so nico and i were in this league at colorado state from 2007 to 12 uh, nico took over again i came back here at 2021 I think the 21-22 season, that's eight years. And collectively, we put more teams in the NCAA tournament than the Pac-12 ever thought of putting in. It's a high major basketball league. It's a great yep. league, and it's a super fun to be a part of. Yep. And it is maybe shifting gears a little bit, but I'll let Nico handle that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's fine. I'm used to it. That's, see, bosses still do that. To their, <laughs> you know what I mean? They, like, yeah, I've, I'm, I've gotten good at it. I only learned from the best. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh so what flows downhill, right? <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I, I, I think he's right. And, and, uh, the other thing that's cool about our league is you just look at the quality of coaches and the quality of the programs who invest in basketball at a high level, uh, the places we get to go play. I mean, again, it's, it is the elite of the elite. And, um, I just think we're going to continue on this trend. I mean, obviously, you know how this works. I mean, it's going to depend on what we do in the non-league. You know, the only thing that I think I cry wolf about, I think we're held to a different standard than these other leagues. Like, you know, they have this system of how you're supposed to get into the tournament on the net rankings and whatever it is. And um, unless they change the rules, you know what I mean, that we don't know about, all we can do is play the games and do it. And our numbers and our results speak for themselves. And as long as that continues to happen, we deserve to have the access to the NCAA tournament. Yeah. The thing I love about the Mountain West, and Sam got me onto that, is the late night games for me being out in uh, the Midwest and just seeing, I mean, it's a coaches league, but you guys got some ball players too. I mean, Isaiah Stevens, we had on the podcast with uh, Coach Medved. And, I mean, just a great kid, well-rounded kid. I mean, you got Tyson Dennehart, uh, who's coming back from Boise State. You've got Kurt Rambis. You got Andrew Meadow. <laughs> uh, from Boise State too. I mean, you have it's. A, I mean, it's a players' league and it's a coaches' league, and it's just amazing. And I not not just amazing, but it's going to be really curious to see your guys' non-conference schedule as a conference because of how well you did last year overall. Yeah, it is a players' know. league. It is a players' league. It's a it's a like Nico reference. It's a well coached league. Always has been, but but you look at. I think there was what, 11 or 12 guys that were in the NBA from the Mountain West last year doing about 150 or 60 million in NBA contracts. Um, it, it's, it's you know, Neat Clifford uh, uh, for Nico, and we have Rob Viola, who I think will average a double-double this year in the Mountain West, yep, are, are just really good players. And there's pro prospects everywhere you look. Yep. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And you know what? We are a late-night basketball league. For all those people trying to get right, you know, in their book, uh, here we are for you. Uh, making oh sure God. that uh, you can pay attention to us. And, and there were some games. I mean, I was – Sam lives in Fort Collins. We were at the Nevada and Colorado State game. I mean, we were on the court. And, you know, Isaiah Stevens hits this little, like, off, you know, not square – like, just beautiful jump shot. Place goes nuts. And then you know what happened next. And we were there for it. And, I mean, just the energy 
and the life a lot of, like in Moby Arena was phenomenal. And I remember talking to Coach Calhoun, who's now at Utah State. He actually got hooked onto it because when his kids went to bed, what was on TV? The Mountain West. Nick, one of the Nico, best. it feels like he's rubbing it in on that Nevada yeah, game. Yeah, I know. Lucas <laughs> hey, Lucas, I would, Garris I Lucas drills the three-quarter court shot, and yeah, it was the rest is history. But yeah. um, you know, I, I think one of the big things the Mountain West did is the TV contract we signed with Fox and CBS. So you know, we've got like those Friday night Fox games have been awesome for the Mountain West. Um, like you said, though, that late night slot. I can't tell you how many people other parts of the country that go to bed and they turn on and they got turned on to the mountain West here in the last three years and continue to watch. And they see for themselves the quality of play. And I mean, you're right. Like I, you know, our arena, what we had seven sellouts last year, we had uh, several others that were close, but it's not just our place. When you travel around to these other places, people don't understand the quality of, of, of the crowds and the arenas and the environments that we get to play in on a nightly basis. It's, it is unlike anything, you know, and the players are awesome. The coaches are awesome. I think what's neat about our league too is, you know, there's always going to be movement now in college athletics, but boy, there's a lot of quality players who've stayed in the league this year. There's mm -hmm. a lot of quality players who have decided to stay in the mountain West. And again, I think that speaks to the overall quality of play. And I think you're going to see another great season from us. Yeah. yeah, what you guys created the last, not just last year, right? Even a couple of years before that. I mean, it's like March happens in the Mountain West, like in December, January. You know, it's like, I mean, the students are excited to go to games. Every single game is competitive. You know, you really don't know what's going to happen. I kind of want to go into what we'll call the off season, even though I think as head coaches, there is no off season anymore. Um, like what were the summers like for you guys kind of putting your own rosters together, you know, and cause there's so many different moving parts with transfer portal and then obviously graduating seniors and things like that. And, you know, Nico, if you could kind of start with uh, what the Colorado state looks like and how you kind of put that roster together with, you know, kind of once, what was that conversation with Nick getting him back, you know, before that deadline and then Jalen, Kion, bringing Bo and born on Keyshawn Williams, who, you know, I'm hoping he's healthy this year. Cause I think that guy can just put up some points and then taking little rocks, uh, Jalen Crocker Johnson. I think that's a huge win for Colorado state as well. So can you kind of talk about your squad and what that roster looks like? Yeah. I mean, it was going to be a, I mean, we had five seniors last year. It was going to be a, a, a real turnover. And so we've got a lot of new players this year. We knew that going into, into the off season, it was going to be busy. And then, you know, third year in a row, we're, we're dealing with a, with a kid who's, you know, in the combine and it's going to go down to the deadline has got a decision that's right on the, on the brink there. Um, you know, and, and again, there is, you don't stop, you just keep going. And I, I, Man, the same thing. I'm trying to, you know, end of May. It's kind of our time. Our kids are going to report for summer school in June. And I love Neek like a son, but it's like, my God, you're trying to enjoy like four or five days uh, on the beach with your family. And I'm dealing with uh, on the deadline. I got kids sleeping in my hotel room uh, trying to figure out what this kid's going to do. And, and uh, I'm, you know, thank goodness he came back. But I just feel good that in all three situations, you know, those kids didn't go in the portal, but they made the best decision for them, you know, and that's where my job is to support them. And then you get into the summer, you, you start practicing and, and here we are. But I thought we did a, I thought we did a good job with, with, you know, what we had on our plate in the off season with as much turnover as we had. Um, but we're a work in progress. I mean, there's no question about it. I, I like our guys, but we're starting from a different position when you have so many new faces and Isaiah Stevens look, look, maybe look a lot smarter than I was guys. Um, you know, to have that guy start uh, uh, for us for five years is pretty incredible. And so we're a work in progress, but I like our guys and thank God we don't play tomorrow. And so we've got till November uh, uh, to get ourselves going in, in another really competitive schedule and competitive league. Yeah, He's yeah. right about Isaiah Stevens. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I figured that out. So, yeah. yeah. You know, at the rate, at the rate we're going at, he might be able to play another five years for you. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> no, thank I you. Do anything to have that. I, I almost teared up when I went into the meeting room in June for the first time and he wasn't sitting in his chair, you know, right up front like he has for five hours. And like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? But that's part of it. You, you, you move on. And, and uh, I, I, I like our group. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, go ahead, Sam. No, I was just going to kind of turn it over to Coach Miles, kind of like what your what your team's looking like in roster. It seems like you um, 
replaced a lot of guys, right? And what yeah. did that look like? And I, I love how well-rounded your roster looks like with UDJ from Utah State coming in, six, Mountain West six Man of the Year. Um, Dayong, with incredible shot blocker. And then Will McClinnon, who, you know, from UCLA, has got some big game experience. And then you've already mentioned Robert, you know, and, you know, I hope he's healthy this year coming off of an injury. Yeah, I think Sada Narak and um, Joel Mariel are going to help us on the front line. Day Day Hall, who I really like from Stephen F. Austin, uh, is just uh, one of those guys that gets to the ball and comes up with the ball. You know, we lost our top three, our starting uh, guards, all to the portal that all took, you know, maybe more NIL money. But at the same time, we were 10th in the league. So maybe that's not such a bad deal. You know, uh, let, let's, let's get this thing right. Uh, I'm excited about where we're going for our future. I think our front line is more improved. I think our defensive rebounding will be better. Can't win till you eliminate losing. Um, like Nico said, thank God we don't play a game today because we throw it all over the gym. Uh, so I think as we get this thing in order, uh, we'll be a much improved product. And that's good for the league. And we're excited to, to you know, we made postseason for the first time in forever two years ago. And we're looking back. Uh, we're looking forward to being back in that kind of conversation again this year. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's amazing because, you know, you look at conference schedules and records. I remember Sam and I were out, uh, out, uh, Wyoming, uh, Colorado state way and talking to coach Linder, who's no longer uh, there, but it's amazing how a couple players injuries, you know, bounces calls could have changed your conference record. I mean, for both of you guys, actually, not just, you know, um, you know, coach Linder, but coach miles for you and also coach Medved for you this past year too. Yeah, I think that's the glory of it. You know, anytime you get in conference play, you know, you ask a coach, what's the best conference in the country and it's the toughest conference in the country, and they'll tell you it's the one you're playing in. Um, teams are, you know, know each other so well. And, and you know, I had a chance to coach in the Big Ten for seven years and thought it was probably the most prepared, best scouted league I'd ever been a part of. But almost everybody in the Mount West has got some Big Ten flavor. Nico went to school, worked – with, under Clem Haskins and, and understands the Big Ten, Richard Patino, Steve Alford, myself, Brian Dutch are all coaching the Big Ten. And there's a lot of guys, right, that, that know what's going on. And, and uh, I think as you look at it, this league is, you know, any given night, anybody can beat anybody, and you've got to have your team ready to go. And, it, and it's an interesting league, you know. Like, for instance, you know, we're flatland out here by the, by the ocean, and everywhere we go is at altitude. We need more depth. You know, we need other things. There's a lot of things to consider in the Mountain West that are, are really interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about when it comes Al, to. He knows here. a little bit about the altitude. He got off the airplane at uh, Denver International when he came out here, and we, we had to like pull over. <laughs> God, you guys are soft. You should never admit that. Like, my goodness. I don't. Yeah, I live yeah. out here. I'm, I'm all about it. <laughs> oh my God, it was like it was awful. I mean, I, I've never drank in so much water in my life and still feel like crap. <laughs> it's dry too. It's humid and it's dry. And I listen and. I mean, Miles is right. I mean, like, it, you know, whatever league you play in, I mean, whether it was the Big Ten, the SoCon, I was in the Missouri Valley, uh, now this league, I mean, everybody's so good. They know what they're doing. I mean, it's – and I think it's – you realize that as a coach and you try to drill it down into your players how hard it is to win any game at this level. Mm -hmm. Just what it takes to win any game is incredibly difficult. And, and uh, um, again, it's not going to be any different this year. And we all can go back and look at – uh, games that didn't go our way. Sometimes we tend to forget the ones that did go our way. You know what I mean? At the end, but, but boy, yeah, I think every season you can look back and say, man, you know, we're, we're up, uh, up one with five seconds to go in the pit and uh, uh, we don't win. Uh, uh, we're up 11 with a minute <laughs> to go up in Laramie and lose, which was the hardest, you know, game I've ever been a part of in coaching, but you know, you mentioned the Nevada one, Lukey had to rub that in my face again here today, you know, <laughs> Uh, um, but we also won some games, you know what I mean? We found a way to win some games, you know, some close games that way too. And so that's the nature of it. But ultimately coach, you know, this, I mean, most of the time in the league, these games are going to come down to the last three or four minutes. You know, you're, you're going to, you fight to keep yourself in there and then you're going to have to find a way to steal it in the end and make more plays. And when you win, you find a way to win those games. And when you don't have the season you want, you usually find a way to let more of those slip away. And it's not going to be any, it's been that way for a thousand years. It'll probably be a thousand years after us and it won't be any different this season. Yeah. yeah. It, when I look at the different rosters in the Mountain West, like it just see, there's this trend where juniors and seniors want to come and play in the Mountain West, 
right? Good juniors and seniors, right? Like what, what is it that's so appealing, you know, about coming here? Like, and like, how, how, what does that say about the league just having such mature players? The altitude. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I I think it goes back to earlier. I think I said there's 13 guys in the NBA making about 160 million bucks. I think it's a pros league. It's, it's a, I remember when I left North Dakota state and came to the mountain West, a buddy of mine said, you know, you just skipped a whole level. Like you went over the Valley and the A-10 and you went to, that's a different league. And right away, you know, I probably didn't quite appreciate what he meant. And then when Nico and I got there and we're going against Utah, TCU, BYU, uh, you know, uh, uh, UNLV, Lonker had really good teams. Uh, New Mexico had really good teams. I, I immediately figured it out, right, Nico? We, the, oh. it, it's just such a high-level league. And it's, and it's always been a transfer league. We had very good transfers at, at uh, uh, Colorado State when we were there. And we continue. Now they just don't have to sit out. You know, they get to play right away. Uh, it's always been a league very attractive to, to transfer, high-level transfers. And, you know, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, I told our staff when we came from the Missouri Valley here, no knock on them. I'm like, you're going to see – immediately the step up in talent just the length the athleticism the level of player is just different um across the board and i mean miles said it the amount of players we have playing at the next level if you're an all-conference player in the mountain west you, you're a pro you're gonna play pro for a long time you're, you're a pro you're a pro um we've got nba scouts at almost every game have them at practice i mean they mm-hmm. follow this league like you said more people are being turned on here because of our tv it's not that it's just that sometimes people on the other side of the coast haven't watched enough of it to really understand, you know what I mean? The level of play that we, uh, that we have here. And so, and it's a fun style. I mean, you get to play, yeah. I'm, I'm being redundant here, but the places you get to go play and, and, and so like that, it is just an awesome experience. So it's, a but it's also, but style. also coach and not to cut you off. It is so fast paced. I That's mean, sure. you watch Donovan Dent go from basket to hey, basket. Let's not watch him go coast to coast. Okay. Uh, well, we, that up and we, were, we were up one with five seconds to go and we're trying to build a wall and transition. I don't know. I got through like four guys and went to the rim and laid it in. He's incredible. So was yeah. he, was he a guy that you hope wasn't going to come back? Yes. hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Sorry, Richard. Yeah. It's like when we all wish each other good luck. At the yeah, that's of the a game. It's all BS. Well, what I would tell is I hope nobody gets hurt, but I hope you play terrible. I hope you kick it all over the gym. You can't make a shot. You miss your free throws. You miss defensive assignments. And I hope nobody gets hurt because I love you, but I don't want anybody to play well. But, but it's funny. Yeah. We, we had another uh, conference preview. It was the Ohio Valley. And he says, we don't want to talk. Of, we don't know the guys who are coming back. Let's talk about the guys that are leaving because we can talk all about them. <laughs> Yeah. But but isn't that kind of the truth? <laughs> God. Well, I thought Tim was hoping Isaiah Stevens would be back for another season. Yeah. So well, hope, so yeah. I when uh Nico beat us in the Mount West tournament in a really well 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 played game, a fun game. I just said good riddance, Isaiah. Man, I love you, but goodbye. Um, and he's right. I mean, I know the big kid that they had that got her, nobody understands how that impacted you know, coach's team, the Viola kid, he's a beast. I mean, he's oh, yeah. physical. That really impacted their team last year. And we all know this as coaches, you know, injuries happen and they say it, but nobody really understands how key injuries impact your team other than coaches. Fans don't care at the end of the day. They look, they do, but they care about the result. But boy, had they had that kid last year. And so he's going to make a difference for them. Yeah. We'll be and, better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's really interesting. Like you look at some, like you, for instance, um, coach Sprinkle left uh, Utah state, but if you look at the t- players, the coaches and players that came back, I mean, Patino was somewhat flirting, at least in the media, it was coming across, but he's back, but you guys retained a lot of good players, both on your own rosters. And you look at like Nevada, I believe they have three starters coming back and they got Nick Davidson, who I think is going to take another step. You got New Mexico with Donovan Dent, Boise state. I mean, coach Rice has been there forever. I mean, even UNLV, who kind of had an interesting year, has got Dayton jo- Thomas uh, Jr. back. So I think the conference is – and look at Air Force. They got Taylor and Becker back. I mean, the conference is not going to skip a beat, I don't think, this year. And let me add on that. All of you right now, I think I talked to to Dutch the other day. Dutch, and like he is in his element right now because all you guys and everyone else is going to tell him, oh, you lost all these guys. You're going to Bullshit. Be I'm not. 
I know you didn't, but all these people that like, and I'm like, Dutch, how much are you loving this right now? Like, you've been (laughs) the predominant team in the league, and everyone's going to say, like, you're not. So I'm just telling you, people can say whatever you want. San Diego State's going to be right there. Well, you got a kid. You got the kid from Florida Atlantic, Nick Boyd. He didn't even leave San Diego and got Wayne McKinney's uh, the th- the third from San Diego, and then he brought the big kid in from um, Middle Tennessee State. I mean, he just keeps. It seems like reloading, and I think for all you guys, it, even though he might reload, you guys can too, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, uh, Dutch always is going to get guys. Like, there's no yeah. doubt about it, and uh, and that's a great situation, right? And uh, and this league is a player's league. I think it's, it, you know, the coaches do a great job, but you just see so much talent over and over. And, and now with your ability to, you know, to take a transfer to multiple times, you know, a kid can transfer multiple times, your ability to reconfigure and keep your league strong, I think is, is better than ever. And I think a lot of people have done that. Nico's done it with some guys. And I think we've yep. increased our talent pool too. Yep. Yep. And I think it's interesting, you know, 10 years ago, we could have had this conversation. Would you ever have thought that you could like transfer four or five times within a college career, let alone be 26 married and have three kids and play be a sophomore at Colorado state potentially. And when we started at Colorado state, we couldn't buy them lunch. Okay. <laughs> Just think of that. Right. Now, now these guys are driving better cars than the coaches, which is okay. But uh, it's just so different, man. It's changed so much. And I think that's the one thing, and we, we alluded to it earlier with conference affiliation changing and some of those things. We're in a, a, a point of change more now than ever before in our lives. My fire yeah. alarm's going off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you're, like, pulling uh, I know. He's, he's, you know, he's, 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 he's like, before the show and when, stuff. Hey, when you live in a compound and they get through <laughs> the first gate with the, you know, you got to you gotta get them before they get to the second gate. I got to get the security in order here. There you go. There you go. Sam, let's start them off here. Let's get it, get it going here. Yeah, Coach Medved, Coach Miles, LT is going to fire off, you know, five, six questions. Should be pretty easy. Um, but if it leads to a little story, feel free to just let loose here. LT, let's get yeah. it. Yeah, you, you, you've you dealt with this at uh, Colorado State, and the whole world have heard it the next day, right? Um, so, Coach Miles, I'm going to ask you this first, and I'm, and I'm curious what Coach Medved's answer. Maybe he might change it from when he asked, we asked him that in January, February last year, or this past season. One word, Coach Miles, to describe the, uh, the Mountain West Conference. It's an electric conference, electric. I'm sticking with mine, unforgiving. Great answer. They're both great, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. The most animated Mountain West coach on the sidelines. Wow. I know you guys look down the down the other bench. Well, it's either Joe Scott or Dutch. I I think so. Joe might have the Joe might carry the banner there. Yeah, he might carry the banner. Okay. I'd have to go you, there. Who who would you say is the best Josh coach on the sidelines? Wait, be, best hair is uh New Jersey <laughs> Steve Alford. Like the yeah. you gotta give that combo of hair the best hair. Like it's not time. I, I would agree with that. Like yeah. Alford, he's got it, he's got it together that way. Yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't move, you know that? No. Got it together, man. It's good. Yeah. It's, good. It's, still I don't, and it's the same color since he was 19. Well, it was the same hair he played when he was playing at Indiana, a schoolboy legend. It's still <laughs> the same. Hair he played in high school. They're, <laughs> they're an amazing great, tandem. man. He looks great. I know. They're amazing I tandem. Shoot. I, I wonder if he can still shoot the rock like he used to. <laughs> I'm, you know? I'm not going to play any free throws. I promise you that. <laughs> I bet he can. I bet yeah, he can. Yeah. All right. Toughest place to play in your conference. Oh, man. Uh, I I think it's between two. I think it's the pit or it's the spectrum at Utah State. I mean, Viejas is right up there too. Yeah, Viejas. Um, it's hard, but I mean, I I think you got to go with the pit, in my opinion. Why so? Is it just rowdy? I I mean, I think you know they're gonna have their fifteen thousand fans there. Um, you know, I love him. He's a, the 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 snake's going to be there when you when you get to the game, and they're just the 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 acoustics. They're yeah. on top of you. The tradition, it's phenomenal. Here's what I'll give them too: is the crowd is relentless on the refs. 
Yes. I think they mess with the refs. Every time there's like two straight calls against the Lobos, they're they're tough, man. They're like they are really on those refs. And I think it affects the refs. I, I really do. I, it's yeah. not quite that way at Viejas or some of the and some of those other places altitude like Air Force and Wyoming are hard to play. Um but but I, I think the pit. I go with Nico too. I, I agree with that. Although I'll say this, those those fans at Utah State, I mean, those students, they're the night, but they are mean. Oof. They're mean to me. <laughs> they're oh, they're really mean to me. I mean, and then yeah. what's funny is I remember this year's first game, we we go there, we play a really close game. They beat us by five and they storm the court at the end. And they're storming. I mean, the stuff that I don't I can't repeat the stuff that they were saying to me and stuff because the student section right there. And then we're going off the court and they're storming and they kind of bump it. Oh, excuse me. Are you OK? You know, yeah, yeah. after they bump into you because yeah. they're like nice and polite after they, what, what do you mean? Are you what are you just saying to me up there in the crowd? But anyway, I just oh, think man. the mean spiritedness is is there. Um Oh. And like they'll always offer me ice cream and never follow up on the ice cream. <laughs> and, and it's all a and, front. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and I got one more. So, uh, you know, there's the one guy that writes something on the whiteboard. And then as you walk down to the end of the bench, he points the whiteboard at you and there's a question on it, you know? And so the one time he says boxer or brief to me. Right. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I don't wear underwear. Right. <laughs> And they all laughed and chuckled and all this, right? So then I walk away and I come back and he wrote down, prove it. <laughs> prove it. I thought that was good. That was a That good was good. Idea. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think I get arrested for that. Yeah. Yeah. Best Mountain West Conference official. Is there one? Know. Is that possible? Yeah. The, the one that just retired. What's his name? <laughs> Yeah, who doesn't do our league? <laughs> That's if we had one game or whatever. That yeah, who's who's rich? Boy, how you're gonna put me on the spot? Like like saying that? Like holy cow! At least he didn't ask you what the worst one is. You know, That's... <laughs> I, you know, I God, there, and, and I'll say this like, and I'm not like. There's a lot that do a terrific job. You know, one guy who I think has been great up there. You know what? I think our guy Tony Padilla does a good job. You know, you get Tony to know him. I think Tony's a really good official. He doesn't put up with any crap. And whenever I know that, you know, we're going to have him on the road in a tough environment, I feel like we're going to be treated fairly. Yeah, yeah I, I think all those guys are good. I thought John Higgins did a nice job of, of yeah. organized officials. Eric Curry was around. All those guys are really good. Here's what I like. The refs that allow for a really fast game because when we play those 8 o'clock Pacific games, right, everybody wants that thing over in a hurry. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> including Coach Miles. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Which team fouled the most in conference this year? Statistically. Well, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. San Diego State, like you just watch any San Diego State game and you'll just have a ball handler just randomly fall down twice a game. Somehow, not getting fouled ever, but they just, so, oh, what, what happened there? He just tripped over the line. I, <laughs> I think they do a good job. Bob. Dutch yeah. does not see any job. Because that's a loaded question. I'll go on that. You just said who get, it's who fouls the most or who gets called for the most. Who fouls yeah, the most. two different Actual things. Fouls exactly. fouls so if you're fouls. asking me who fouls the most, it is yeah. San Diego State. Like there's no question Wrong. about that. So nope. Who Wrong. gets called? Well, you're now you're asking LT who gets called for the fouls. The yes. Most. Probably yeah. us. <laughs> nope. No, you both you both are both wrong and both not your teams. Nevada, 17.7 fouls called per game. Yeah, I can they, say it, but you know what's crazy about them is they also get fouled a ton. So and, they're and usually in yeah. very physical. Yeah, it's the psychology of officiating right there. That they foul a lot and then they get the benefit of that too. And they set 32 illegal screens every game, not called. Yeah. And they also have like 10,000 bats that affect the games too. Yeah. They can suck the blood right out of me and poor Nico. And look at how pale Nico is. It wouldn't take much. <laughs> it is. It, it's only, guys, look at how pale I am now. And it's only going to get worse. You can imagine <laughs> that here quickly. In a couple I, months, by the time we start games, it's going to get really bad. So, <laughs> all right. Say it while what, you can. what team fouled the least as a team Air called Force. Air Force? Per game? Yeah. Air Force. Why? Because they're military guy? You're wrong. You guys are both wrong. Who was it? Wyoming. It was. Now, it might change with Sundance Wicks, one of the best names in college coaching. Wyoming had 15.7 fouls per game. What was it? I'm going to tell you a story about recruiting Sundance Wicks. 
Yeah, as head coach of Southwest Minnesota I'm, State. I'll go look at Ken Palm after this, but yeah. yeah. He, hey, uh, Paul Sather is the assistant coach at Northern State. Is now the head coach at University of North Dakota. Paul, I coach Paul at Northern State in Aberdeen. Former assistant coach there. They're recruiting Sundance Wicks. How many said, Paul, what are you doing recruiting a kid named Sundance, for Christ's sake? What are we doing here? So we're watching him, and finally we're in Minneapolis. I'm saying, do you know Janet Jackson is uh, playing at the Target Center tonight? And he goes, really? I'm like, let's go. I'll buy you a ticket. We'll go. Tell Sundance he played great. And so we took off, went to the, uh, went to the uh, concert. Kevin Garnett got up there. Janet Jansen did a lap dance on him uh, with the velvet rope. It was a phenomenal night. We had a great time. And he still signed Sundance. That's how overrated recruiting is. Uh, it was actually seven pheasants in a hunting trip. I saw that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and I sat in on 10,000 bobbles and home visits, so I know exactly how they go. That's crazy. Yeah, Sundance gave us a little recruiting story. We had him on a couple of weeks ago, and uh, yeah, he said uh, it's because uh, he was also looking at uh, wherever uh, Coach McDermott was at. at Wayne, the time. State, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne State, Nebraska. Nebraska yeah. yeah, so Wayne State was also recruiting Sundance, and uh, yeah, the uh, the coach at Northern State uh, gave uh, Sundance's dad like seven pheasants, and his dad was like, "This is where you're going, son." <laughs> it's a good hunting trip, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. That's how it works. Yep, yep. So finish them off, Sam. Yeah, um, coaches. I'm gonna kind of turn it over to you guys. You know, anything you guys want to share to uh, you know your alumni fan base, boosters, student section? Anything you guys are looking forward to this season? You know, um, how the summer workouts have been treating you and your guys. Um, so, uh, Coach Miles, why don't you start us off? Yeah. Well, one thing I'd like to say is, you know, it's been so impressive. As a guy who really cares about Colorado State, right? Obviously, I care about San Jose State, but but really so much affinity. The job Nico Medved has done there has been amazing. The way he's integrated that program into the community, uh, the things they do for that community, certainly rallying the students to come out and support the team has been so impressive. As Nico knows, when we got there, it was in disrepair a long, long time ago. He took it over, and it was still not. It was still needed a fix. And the job he's done there and the way those people have supported that is really, really impressive and, and great to see. And I commend him on that because um, I love that place and I love what he's done there. And he's a, he's a champ. Uh, San Jose State, we, we're really excited just about moving forward, um, uh, you know, the, the, in the ever changing landscape. You know, you have to adapt or you're going to die. We're working on all of that stuff right now. I think we've got a good bunch of kids. It's going to be physical. They're going to they're going to be competitive. And I think we're going to help the league. And I, I think we have a chance for some postseason if everything goes right and we get healthy and stay healthy. So nice. it should be a fun year for the Spartans. Boy, I, that's nice of you to say that, Coach Miles. I, 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 would, I would say this, though. I mean, I hope, and I, I'm assuming they do, but they probably really don't understand how lucky they are at San Jose. <laughs> they have Tim Miles as their head coach. Uh, um, this guy has – turned around every program and exceeded expectations at every place that he's been and the way he does it and the way he builds. I mean, I wouldn't be here today, obviously without him, but it's really unbelievable. So we know the challenges that he inherited and you look at the teams that he's put together and how difficult they are to play against. And I just cringe when I think about, uh, um, I know they're going to be better <laughs> this year. And I, I know that so I'm not looking forward to playing against him and, it's going to be a fun year. I just, I just hope we can continue to, to, to build. And I've been really blessed by, you know, our fan support, our students have been phenomenal. I know I go around the community and we've got people that are trying to buy courtside tickets or better tickets and they can't find them because uh, uh, there's no seats available. And that's the best problem that we've had. And I hope we can continue to, to, to build on that and build our support because as each individual school builds their brand, what does that do for the league? It just lifts everybody else up. And so, I'm really looking forward to it. We got a new group of guys, but um, I think hopefully we can stay consistent in the way we play, a style that we play together. We fight hard together, and uh, we've got great young men in our program and continue to connect with the community, and we're going to be a product that people are going to enjoy cheering for. And um, It's going to be another great year in the league this year, and I'm really yep. looking forward to it. Yeah. So, how? okay, we're, we were, last question. How many bids is the Mountain West going to get this year? Oh, Miles, what do you think? Three, I think we get. I think we we get the. Um, I don't Mountain think. West your, discount. I don't think your commissioner is going to allow that. I, I think yeah, we get the Mountain West discount. I think they're mad, like or whatever, because we had too many last year. 
more than the ACC and the Pac-12 combined, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, um, I'm going to say three to four. Okay. I, I would agree with that. I'm going to say four. I, I, I think what Coach is saying is true. You look at it. There's going to be expansion in the NCAA tournament. That's a formality, but it's obviously not going to happen this year. So we're still at the 68 this year. And with those leagues expanding, you know, already this year, you know, the Big Ten and the S, like it's going to be really tricky this particular season without expansion. But the expansion of those, some of those leagues, it's going to make it really tricky, maybe as tricky as it's ever been to get in as an at large. And so I think that's a factor when we see expansion happen. Maybe there'll be more opportunities, but um, the league's going to be great. And I believe we're going to play at a level we deserve those bids. Yeah. Awesome coaches. Just you're going to stick on with us for one more second. That was really great. I mean, Sam, obviously, we're really excited about the Mountain West Conference. It's going to be fun. It's going to be some late nights. Put the mother, put the women and children to bed. That sounds so sexist. Put the kids to bed. I am watching the Mountain West. I'm looking forward to seeing Coach Miles go from where you got to go off the golf course to in the gym to win some championships. Same thing with you, Coach Medved. So check out the uh, Mountain West. Thank you guys, coaches, for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. And follow us and like us, and we'll be back with another conference preview show that we'll just have to wait to see on the Full Core Press Podcast, a college basketball experience.